Hello, hello, everybody at home. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Radical Futures. I hope you enjoyed the wonderful performance that you just saw, okay? Um, as y'all know, my name is Tanasia. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm the director of programs at the Theater Offensive. I am sitting here today with our artist from this episode, Anaka, and I'm going to pop it off to Anaka to give us their pronouns, to give us um, where what land they are based on today and then to give us a little bit about them and the work they do in their own words. So let me popcorn it on over. Go for it, Anaka. <laughs> love, love, give thanks. Give thanks for the moment. Give thanks for the meditation. Give thanks for the opportunity to share and exchange. Um, so thank you so much, PPO and Radical Futures Program and everybody for having me. I'm super grateful. Uh, my name is Anaka. I use all pronouns. I use she, he, and they pronouns. Um, I grew up in Multnomah land, a.k.a. Portland, Oregon, um, and right now I'm in Atlanta, um, so good thanks. Um, what was that the question again? Yeah, a little so how bit do about I describe you. myself? Yes. Uh, so I describe myself as an artist, but I also describe myself as an archivist and an alchemist uh, because I'm really passionate about preserving sacred wisdom in my work and helping document and archive the movements that are going on now in terms of like sacred liberation movements, artists, healers, people who are really contributing to the culture and tradition of their people. Mm -hmm. um, so about for about 10 years now, I've been working on a project called Activate Archive, where I've been helping document sacred wisdom movements, liberation movements around the U.S. and also the African diaspora, mostly West and South Africa, parts of East Africa, as well as Central and South America and the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. um, and I also practice angel music and create through a form of channeling where I'm helping uh, bridge the gap between like the spirit world and the earth world through sound. Mm -hmm. um, and I also call myself an alchemist because I'm an herbalist uh, and I do in training. I perform healing with herbs and energy and stuff like that. So yes. <laughs> I have a few things. Yes. Yeah. Um, I love that. Thank you for telling us like a little bit about what Activate Project is, a little bit about what Angel Music is, because they've just witnessed, I feel like, the the culmination or the output of it, right? And now mm. we're getting and we're transitioning into the how, the how do we bridge these gaps around practices and how do we form, I will say, or manifest, because I don't like the word form, how do we manifest our own way of giving thanks and artistic expression? right? Mm -hmm. As it, at the intersect of our diasporic roots. So thank you so much. Um, but then now I'm going to pop on to the next question of this QSA, Q, QA, which is um, in this, these episodes, we're really delving into the alchemy between artistic expression and practice, which you talked about a little bit, mm -hmm. right? And as an artist whose artistic expression is deeply rooted in practice, can you speak a little bit about how each informs and shapes the other, specifically in angel music and in doing site-specific work, because a lot of angel music happens in specific areas, right? Mm -hmm. um, so if you, could you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, no, that's a, such a good question. And I appreciate the emphasis on the practice element as well, because um, so basically I was born a dancer. Dance is the thing that um, as a communication tool comes to me the most easily. And I think that that's what led me into feeling the urgency behind documenting movements that were happening in the world because um, mm -hmm. dance is such a form of like physical communication. And I feel like sound and tradition and practicing herbal medicines and just other forms of healing as a community is something that's very important to me in terms of the actual process. And I actually mm -hmm. became really interested in the processes of making music at an early age. I like being in studio. Um, my father's a musician, so I got to see wow. his ways of channeling through sound. And there's just always this like connection to the creator, connection to a source point energy that um, mm -hmm brings a certain magic into the process of creation that I'm super passionate about. So um, with Angel Music, basically after years of doing this archive project and just witnessing artists creating my whole life, I've been feeling uh, this deep need to really get deeper into myself and like my purpose of creation. And um, sound is such a potent way of communicating with yourself and with your guides, your angels, your ancestors, 
and it's also a really potent way to communicate to the world on a larger scale you know mm -hmm. um because sound is beyond language it's beyond everything it's like so much more about a feeling so mm -hmm. during quarantine I actually like opened myself up a lot more to channeling sound because my grandmother who was a medicine woman that I grew up with passed away and she was the first elder that I lived with that transitioned into the next realm during my life like all my other elders had already transitioned before I was born so I think just her passing and her literally passing on the the initiation of being the medicine woman of the family um you know receiving that initiation really changed my perspective or elevated my perspective on my purpose and mm. I just remember I literally sat at my altar and was just like please just give me songs because mm. you know also being a descendant of the transatlantic slave trade and colonization mm -hmm. of indigenous peoples being an afro indigenous person in america it's very much about like there's been so many memories that have been lost um in terms mm -hmm. of our culture our languages our dances our songs and being able to actually go to the motherland i'm the first person in my lineage to even get to go to africa period but being able to actually go to west africa and parts of south africa and seeing how my friends there actually know their own languages and know songs that they mm -hmm. their ancestors have been singing. That's something that my spirit really craves and like really desires is like that initiation of memory. So mm. I basically just ask my angels to give me songs that mm. are from my lineage that I can carry forward and like really give to my children. I don't have children yet, but like give to them and and have them feel like they're from somewhere much bigger than here. <laughs> yes. So that's the main intention behind angel music is to wow. have it be a practice of memory that that is a ritual for me and also like a way that I can basically tap into the highest vibration because, you know, English is the main language that I was, I know. And, yep. as you know, it's a colonizer language. Mm -hmm. So it's even hard for me to communicate in my own language sometimes and I find mm. that frustrating because, you know, as an African person, as an indigenous to Turtle Island person, it's like there's so many other languages in my blood that I don't know yet. So I feel like this sound is meant to communicate to everybody in the world that like there's a higher vibration that we communicate on that's even above mm. spoken word that we can all relate to on a spiritual level. And the angels do have their own languages. Mm -hmm. um, and you can look into the Akashic records. You can look into like all these other like angelic studies and mm -hmm. hear that like there is a vibration that they do communicate with us on. So um, I do incorporate some English words into my songs because I also see it as like a way of thinking about the future of spiritual music and like how as a Black American, like we change the whole world with our music and our sound all the mm -hmm. time. And I feel like as a person who's descended from slaves as well like our spirituals are still sung to this day for a reason mm -hmm. <laughs> and I want to help make like kind of like a spiritual for today like we're still going through very similar initiations that our ancestors went through luckily we don't have to do certain sacrifices that they had to do for us but there's still like a certain level of sacrifice to existing right now in a black body and I feel like being able to pull through the spiritual sounds to like keep us going is also my goal with angel music so <laughs> there's actually a lot to say about it like yes. really concept. um I'm really um grateful because the songs come through first and then even after they come through me I have to teach them to myself because that's yes. how much of the channel they are like I have to like um go back and hear the download that I've received so that's how I know that it's not coming from me directly like it's coming through me and um because of that, I just hope that the resonance continues to, that, that the resonance is shared. It's actually really at the mm -hmm. beginning of being shared with the world. So that's why I'm also grateful for this opportunity. But yeah, once it's being shared with the world, I hope that the resonance continues for generations just because it's not all so central in English. It's more centralized in like this higher vibration that we can all relate on and like continue yes. with. Um, and that also is related to the Activate Project just in the way that... Um, the main intention of Activate is to create spaces where sacred wisdom can exist and not be exploited as mm. well as exist and be able to communicate with each other because the African diaspora, the indigenous diaspora of the world, like there's so many, there's so many different cultures, but we all know how to communicate with spirit through the elements. And mm. there's such a like ancient relationship between humans being tenders of the earth 
and the waters and like just that ancient wisdom that we have of just being of this body and on this plane. Um, so activate's purpose is to like hold that hold that ancient wisdom and like revive its urgency of it being prioritized because there's been so much deprioritizing in, in colonization. They're doing the opposite, right? They're they're not prioritizing our naturalness. So yep. um, activate portal experiences. This is the sixth one. We've been creating spaces where the sacred wisdom of the archive can exist, where I've been showing some of the films and the photographs, and then also nice. where the sacred wisdom of, of angel music can exist. And I know that you also asked about like the physical spaces. So that is definitely really important in this work is to like not only honor the people of the land, but also to mm. honor the nature of the land. Um, so with this particular piece, this is the second time that I perform primarily for trees and not for humans. <laughs> um, as you see, I'm like, only performing for the trees in this film because yes. this is about the Wiwani forest and about the land that um, is being threatened right now in Atlanta, um, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But yeah, so just prioritizing actually performing for the land is important to me as well because sound also affects the nature. And we don't mm -hmm. really think about that as much, especially in cities. Like we think about, yeah, we don't even think about how the sound of the city is affecting the nope. earth and like how that sound pollution is really affecting us as people and like our spirits and everything. Um, and mm -hmm. I was really lucky to grow up like in the nature and like actually feel that sensitivity ex exchange. Like I just had to leave Brooklyn because like my spirit was like, I need to be in the quiet. Yes! <laughs> so, you know, it's, yes! it's interesting. Like, I love Brooklyn though. Don't get me wrong. Like I love the people so much, but the yes. actual physical sound of the place was like not good for my nervous system. So mm -hmm. just learning more about like health and um, prioritizing the health of our, our future has a lot to do with the earth. And so that's why I really see myself performing a lot for the nature and like sacred temple spaces on earth. Um, mm -hmm. as well as for people, but um, for this piece, I wanted to prioritize that this is just as much about the nature as it is about the people, and we should we should kind of equalize that that relationship that we have with the trees. I, the yes, I completely and utterly understand this. I love what you were talking about around, like, language is lost, and re- like through these practices of our art, it, it is us rebuilding that language and or that translation translation that is indigenous mm. knowledge to us um, mm -hmm. to make those pathways more accessible to our being and to everyone mm. around us, right? And each time right. we do it, that that communication, that back and forth energy between the people, between the land gets a little bit more immediate and a little bit more easier to understand for ourselves, mm. right? Mm. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we had an artist in our first episode literally talk about that in a form of indigenous knowledge and that these this knowledge that you are speaking of is in it's in us right but mm -hmm. what we need to do is start manifesting and believing that knowledge even if we don't have the data to back it up the like the like numbers right all that stuff right there right because yeah. it is indigenous to us we have mm -hmm. it right right so, and then that's what's so funny to me is like everybody's always trying to prove through data and prove through research and like um you know because I am a researcher it naturally you know I look up to people like Zora Neale Hurston and Catherine Dunham like black women who went into the world and really were like nah but this is my culture though like let me see how I can document my culture through movement and writing mm -hmm. and like you know back in the day people weren't really considering that as valuable research but now it's like priceless that Zora Neale yes. Hurston even wrote how her ancestors were speaking because it's important for us to remember that that our languages are so expansive and they change over time. So I yes. feel like it is interesting being a cultural practitioner in research because people expect my archiving to be very um, tactical and logical, um, but it's actually all been intuitively directed. Um, I even just like deciding to create a bridge between the U.S. and South Africa when I first started the project was a very intuitive choice, but South Africa and America have very similar histories in terms of colonization and how mm -hmm. our cultures have evolved. So yeah, everything has been very natural um, and divine, but I give thanks because I feel like now I'm, I'm in a position where I'm seeing, oh, my cultural value is actually priceless and just figuring mm -hmm. out a way for the, for the value of the network to be honored um, is my goal at the moment, like just uh, yes. creating a, a structure and a system where the people within the archive, within the network, are, are honored for their cultural value um, mm -hmm. because 
yeah, even now research is still very quantitative and in, in like based on like capitalism. So yes. Um, yeah. And I love that. Like literally that sentence, your cultural value is priceless. Literally. It period. <laughs> There's nothing more to build off of to change from that. Um, just period. Yeah. And then it's like, yeah. so it's also like move. We we have to we move like that now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. that is the case. Um right. and I and I see in and of myself even a change of pace within the way we form artistry with folks mm-hmm. of different intersections around being like, no, 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 no. Your cultural, your cultural output, that is priceless, number one. So mm-hmm. that is that is that is something that we honor. Like that is not mm-hmm. a question. So when when right. we come to the table with that not even being a question, what are the possibilities of learning? Mm-hmm. What are the possibilities of creation after that? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. And also Listen, nervous system work. The U.S. and Africa from each other for a long time for a reason. Uh, you know, we got so many ways to be connected. There's so many ways we can be more connected. And that's why I'm hoping activate and like creating these portals around the world can help just bring more connection. Because yes. Yeah, we're all we're all craving more na- nature. We're all craving craving that sacred nervous system health. <laughs> well, and even from that nervous yeah. system health you're talking about, I grew up in Baltimore City. Going to the woods mm-hmm. used to scare the living the living bajeebs inside of me. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I would go to the woods. My nervous system wouldn't have all of that, you know, sounds, et cetera, et cetera. And I was mm-hmm. being like, even as a little kid, I was like, I am like, this is a different language that I need to right. learn, right? Being yeah. out here yeah. and these sounds, these noises, what is happening. And mm-hmm. also this language is, I feel like is greater <laughs> than mm-hmm. anything mm-hmm. else that I have been uh, uh, trying to understand sensorially and uh, uh, uh translate sensorily right mm-hmm. so it, it didn't become until the time to the ages that I got into my 30s where I'm like I have a ritual of going to the woods now I have to go to the woods mm-hmm. to, like often to maintain a certain amount of peace a certain amount of energy and also a certain mm-hmm. amount of intuitive knowledge or else I feel it fading over over time mm-hmm. the more I stay in the city so just right. the thing that you yeah. said about nervous systems is really is really like hits yeah. for me, especially right. being I mean, someone that's, who's that's had one of the main that's one of the main elements that I study with medicine. Like most of the herbs I work with are nervous system healers because also the memory piece of my work is very tied to the nervous system as well because the nervous system and the endocrine system are obviously very connected. And mm-hmm. I feel like the way that your brain works, the way that our brains have had to work for generations in survival mode as well, and the way that our ancestors have survived through everything, there's mm-hmm. like such a big shift happening now, at least in my point of lineage, how I see it because I'm the first, like, again, I'm the first person in my lineage to ever even get to go back to Africa since we were stolen from. So that's a big deal. Yeah. And then also like just being able to actually sit down and be like, oh, this is my lineage. This is my legacy. This is where I come from. Like just having my practice be around memory has led me to the herbs that help me with my memory. <clears throat> and and mushrooms also like just shouting out mushrooms. All types mm-hmm. of mushrooms help a lot with memory as well. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's why all of my work, people are like, you do so many things. But really all of my work is about healing memory on a lineage level and um, continuing the legacy of reverence. And like, mm. actually in, in the song that y'all heard the last song, I say, <laughs> I am my generation's veneration because I feel like at the end of the day, like being a representation of being of reverence to what has been and also makes you naturally of reverence to the present and also to the future. Because if you're aware mm. of how you're here to become your best self and become like a, a a, a legacy yes then you kind of have it all figured out in a way like even though I don't have it all figured out I feel like that's what keeps me grounded in all of my work is like okay yes. I'm here to be like a beacon of, of of memory and like yeah be my generation's veneration yes and I think like yeah. literally in a workshop that we had for another play like two months ago we talked about what does it mean to embody and act and in, in your values being your mm. own ancestor or being mm. an ancestor, right? What if everything Tanasia did right now in, in society, the way that I run the arts, the way that I do everything is thinking about being the best ancestor I can, right? right. And thinking about legacy and thinking about 
ancestry at the intersection of climate, intersection at the intersection of planet, at the intersection of space, right? And mm -hmm. at the intersection of systems and thought and values. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. We can talk forever. Yeah, I'm going to move on go. to the we next question. I'm like, I was going to say something else, but yeah, I feel you. <laughs> yes. Um, all right. Yeah. Being Black also, let me just say, being Black, we so close to life and death at the same time, so... Yes. You gotta just be extra aware of, of the gift of life in general. But I feel like, yeah, being Black American, I'm super, I'm like, be mm -hmm. right here with that. Yes, so, you be right yeah. here with that, right? <laughs> with that existence thing. It's so yes. sacred and sensitive. So, yes. yes. And we walk mm -hmm. that fine line all the time. You know what I mean? Yes. And like, yeah. Talking about the fine line, right? Like, I think some of the things that I struggle with, at least when people tell me, like, and we talk as artists, right, is the difference between ritual and practice, right? And so, like, moving, like, transition to the next question, right? These episodes are also about honoring and exploring artistic expression and like, artistic practice as a ritual, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And as an artist whose, like, work is super, like, rooted in the diaspora, di diasporic, right, performance traditions and ritual performance, I'm, like, I'm mm -hmm. really curious at what rituals enable you as an artist to honestly and to presently show up in angel music, right? When mm -hmm. you go and you perform and or you go and you give um, reverence, just like you said, right, through mm -hmm. this work. Mm -hmm. I did think that's such a beautiful question. Uh, so yes, I incorporate prayer a lot into my work. Actually, mm -hmm. as you saw, opened this piece with prayer because um, you know working with intention is very important when it comes to sharing yourself as a channel uh, in general. And um, I feel like because angel music is coming from such a pure place, um, I have to keep myself pure. You know, I have to eat mm -hmm. well. I have to like, so that's a part of the ritual as well, like taking care of myself and getting better at it every day. Um, mm -hmm. But I also grew up with very um, like spiritual parents. My parents are very cosmic. You know, they taught me about infinity and like the universe from a very young age. Even my grandmother uh, that I mentioned before, who's a medicine woman, she asked me, how I felt about, you know, creation from like a very young age. So I was able to kind of perceive how big everything is around me and mm. integrate that from a young age, but I wasn't necessarily religious. Um, so as I became older, I was craving different forms of initiation or like different ways of feeling closer to my ancestors. And um, mm. I was brought into knowledge about like traditions of Ifa and Kumi and also um, just like Native American music and practice. My ancestors are from Augusta, Georgia mostly. Um, so, you know, also like Florida and Virginia areas. So, mm -hmm. and you know how it is, like there's rumors of being certain tribes and everything. So because of the rumors, yeah. I was like, okay, let me just like open myself up to whoever's in me. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, as soon as I believed it, I, um, just kind of kept trusting what my rituals should be so I honestly have just been making up as I go since I was probably like in high school how to like make an altar how to talk to them how to like figure out the ways that I like to communicate with my angels and my guides but mm -hmm. um, over time I just kept receiving more and more affirmations that you know there's more than just blood lineage there's also like spirit lineage and there's like different ways that you yeah. can exist this cosmic lineage because we have all these different bodies right we have a physical body we have a mental body emotional spiritual god astral like we have all these different bodies that um we exist within which means we have different lineages that are connected to all of them mm -hmm. so because of that um i'm very connected to ritual because i feel like uh i can feel this like sustainable growth that happens within myself the more yeah. i honor the God within myself, the more I'm mm. like a reflection of those that are protecting me and honoring me. And I yes. also am now seeing it more as like, yes, we are a tool of the creator, but also the creator is a tool for us. So the way mm -hmm. that we're able to like exchange this experience of being in the physical and representing so many lineages of divine magical energy <laughs> is actually quite an exciting thing to be you know it's like yes. wow I'm really like such a representation of so many things like 
you know, I'm black and white and Native American. I'm like the most American person ever. So, mm-hmm. and the medicine woman I'm talking about is actually from my white side. So even like having that duality of being immediately mixed and seeing the spiritual connection that both my mm-hmm. sides have and that like, it kind of makes me a bridge to to this like universal ritual that isn't yes. necessarily from anywhere, but it's also from everywhere at the same time because I'm mm-hmm. like using my intuition to like figure it out. So that's why even with tattooing yeah. as like a as a ritual, people often are like, oh my gosh, like what does it mean? What is it? And I'm like, honestly, it's it's my symbol of like my global indigenousness. Like I'm indigenous to a lot of parts of the earth and and I want to kind of continue that tradition of just being aware, like, yes, we are from here. I'm from this part of the world, but also, like, we're all from a very mm-hmm. higher and, like, bigger space. Um, so, again, kind of that's why angel music isn't always in English, because it's meant to kind of, like, vibrate on an even higher form of creation that's beyond being in a physical form that we yes. can also all relate to. Um, so, yeah, just really praying often like usually when I'm not talking to people I'm praying so Mm -hmm. (laughs) like if I'm not outside I'm inside or I'm outside praying I don't know so so I pray a lot I make and then I also like incorporate um just ancient practices like herbal medicine Mm -hmm. um herbal baths uh just things that we've been using for generations that work you know and just trying to keep that that rhythm going um even just growing things with intention is like an ancient tradition that should be connected, you know, like I, mean, I could go into that. Yes. But yeah, so no, yes. important. <laughs> I teaching. love that because I think one of the things that like, because I also have an altar, it's right over there. I also have a spiritual practice as well. And one of the things that I hear about, I'm hearing in what you're saying about like number one, your lineages, be it spiritual, men, uh, mental or biological, et cetera, is that, as you came into being and as we all come into being, it's this understanding of we are each a portal in and of ourselves, right? Mm. So what does it mean about the connections, the communications that we are put on this earth to do and to, mm-hmm. you know, uncomplicate if that makes any sense. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Right. Listen, it could all be so simple, but they'd rather make it hard. Like just to quote my OG Lauren Hill a little bit. Like I know that song's not necessarily about what we're talking about, but that's how I feel about the world right now. I'm like, it could really all be so simple. We could be eating mangoes and drinking coconut water and just chilling. Which I do, by the way, but you know, <laughs> there's other things on top of that. Yes. That they think I need to be doing right now. So yes. I don't know, it could all be so simple. And that's it why could all be so simple. ritual does make it feel, make you feel, it makes me feel better. You know, it makes me feel like, better too. Okay. And also, I think giving up the control of being a human is a part of being a human, right? Like just letting your life happen. Well, if you let your life happen and you know whose hands you're putting it in, yeah. it makes you a little bit more faithful in where you're going. And if you let your life happen and if you open up to like listening as to Mm -hmm. what those other lineages are telling you, for instance, like you're talking about altar and you're also talking about hoodoo stuff. And it's like, I've been called to that. And one of my things that one of my mentors said is if you were called to practice, that is an ancestor reaching out to you saying you are called to practice right now. Right. And of course you got to figure out your own way and everything, but Mm -hmm. that is a spiritual lineage that someone in a different, like, 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 right. Like, yeah. Medicine, whatever is trying to reach out to you in and call you right, to exactly right? and these are the tools that we've been given and I think also going back to like what is tangible like science and technology and data is like mm-hmm. that's important but also the intangible is also an important tool to use you know because yep. yeah we have especially being from this land like we have so many different types of people in us like mm-hmm. we have so many different types of people that have done so many different things like even becoming a birth doula right now like Technically, I'm only starting, but like for years, people have been asking me to be a birth doula just because I probably got a few in me that are just sitting there waiting for me to do it, you know? So <laughs> it's really interesting when people feel the energy off of you is so affirming. And I feel like over yes. time, too, like before I was super insecure about making my altar, I was like, I hope I'm talking to them right. I hope they aren't insulted if I make a mistake. But the thing about spirit is like, it's an unconditional love. Like as mm-hmm. long as you're reaching out and as long as you're sharing your love, they're going to feel that and reciprocate it. So because I'm years into feeling that reciprocation, that reciprocity, yeah. it's um, really helped me as a person overall just to like, you know, oh, I have a relationship, I have a reciprocal relationship with my ancestors and with 
whoever guides that I call in also better in my spirit lineage or even like my purpose lineage you know like there's also just people who help you along your path and what you're supposed to do so yes Um, and that's some lineage and time travel like lineage and time travel is one of our like main values at tto and it's the understanding that like yeah we like went deeper we can come (laughs) with y'all we gonna be talking for hours literally (laughs) Um, all right let me get to this next question we got two more questions y'all i promise and then we're gonna get you all the access to anaka i promise (laughs) um so the next question i have is um what is the intention of highlighting uh, Stop Cop City in this edition of mm-hmm. Activate Portal, right? And what is, um, I guess, what do you want to uplift and amplify in this moment in that intention? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, first of all, I just want to shout out all of the people here in Atlanta who've been coming out, who are from here, who've been protecting the Rilani Forest uh, against the building of Cop City. I want to shout out everybody who's been showing up to the council meetings and speaking their mind and everybody's just been so powerful. Um, so like I mentioned, my family is from Augusta, Georgia. We also live in Atlanta, um, but I didn't grow up here. So uh, I have like a very deep connection to here, but I'm still exploring like my actual physical experience in the city. But mm-hmm. because of just like the urgency of the rising of fascism in this country, I'm going to just say it. Um, mm-hmm. And, and uh, the urgency of, of, of the earth being under attack all the time and mm-hmm. how uh, the fact that they want to cut down acres and acres of forest to build a city for cops to just practice attacking us and I'm just like this is so urgent and it's one of those things that uh, they purposefully don't want the whole world to know about mm-hmm. so um, yeah I'm just wanting to reignite an era of artists actually doing protest pieces honestly like I want to reignite an era where artists are you know I mean, there are artists doing protest pieces, don't get me wrong, but I feel like there needs to be more visibility. Um, And so I was thinking to myself, like, what can I do to help raise awareness about Cop City and like to really put a blessing on the actual trees so then Mm. their power is protected and so that, you know, hopefully this prayer that happens will stop it. You know, that's my prayer behind, (laughs) that's my prayer behind this piece is like that these songs protect the trees. So, um, yeah, just prioritizing the health of the trees and also just shouting out and giving thanks to the spirit of Corfu Dipa, who was murdered in the trees by the police, um, just for protecting them. Like, just thinking about all of our ancestors in, in South and Central America and Africa, like, all over the world who have been killed just for protecting the nature. Um, mm-hmm. And now that it's here in the land of the free <laughs> mm-hmm. it's just very potent energy like it's just so important that we yeah. raise more awareness about this issue because you know this isn't a new issue but it is something that that will bring more war onto our physical land i think also being yep. american i've been very privileged to be in a country that's always at war but not physically here as obviously at war but we know mm-hmm. that the police are always at war with us but it's just interesting to um, be in a land where they make it seem like everything's peaceful all the time, but then something like this will happen and they still want to fund it. So, Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm really hoping that this intentional performance, one, protects the trees and two, raises awareness about the issue. So more people know about it and more people put their, their energy behind it so we can just stop it as a people um, Mm -hmm. because we've already created such a mess as humans on earth and um we have to we just gotta we gotta calm down we gotta just calm down mm-hmm. <laughs> eat some more fruits and have some more peace because <laughs> this, is, this is just gonna create more violence and i feel yes. like also we have no idea what their plan is even after building this like there's probably even going to be more top cities after they're allowed to build this one and then it's just going to be the norm you know what I mean yeah. so I like yeah. not being this and forth even the norm is what's necessary as well so as a person who's not from here and hasn't been on the front lines physically I wanted to come here physically and be on the front lines at least with the trees so we can also acknowledge the urgency of actually just protecting the nature um and also yeah just the relationship between that and the fact that there's that Tosu Dita already had to lose their life because they cared about the trees it's like this is such an urgent and heartbreaking issue that needs to have more attention. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you for, again, I will say like, you know, way back when we were talking about this project and you were like, number one, this is going to be a protest art piece. We were like, this is literally within the lineage of all TTO does. So right. thank yeah, you and for bringing that. Shout out again, like all of the friends and family of mine who really actually like show up and hold the healing space for the protectors yes. who are the protectors who are really like and also especially my afro-indigenous people because they also have to just deal with racial stuff while they're protesting like yeah a lot of my family and tribe that i consider a uh, family in this land are going through a lot right now and they're holding a lot and um they deserve to like have somebody else stand up in their space and say something so they can take a break 100 yeah. percent um i think that like you know to disrupt the systems at bay that don't want this to be out there, I'm glad that we are disrupted in this way, this small way that we can. Um, and I'm glad that they are disrupted in the ways that they can and really hit right. that ground running. Um, yeah, it takes, it takes a lot of energy and a lot of people. It does. It does. Yeah. Um, and just so that y'all know at home, if y'all want more information about Stop Cop City, we're going to be placing some links in the chat. Please follow. Please donate. Please show up. And please amplify at the end of the day because again silence is the worst form of oppression and we can together make a noise that it cannot that cannot be ignored so let's do that um now just to end this out is i want to let the people know where to find you next what to get involved in how to see your art as it transforms manifests and builds on itself <laughs> good thanks yes good thanks again for the opportunity um so you can follow me on social media my instagram is my name but all the a's are four so it's four n four k four yes <laughs> um and then you can also go to my website it's just anaka dot work a n a k a dot w o r k instead of dot com because we'd be putting in this work Mm -hmm. um but i also will be having <laughs> you can listen to my project angel music ep and angel music remix ep on both of all the streaming services and on youtube and everything i got some music videos coming out i got some articles yes. coming out um working on an album so we got a lot of things coming um i'm always doing stuff if you know me i always do something <laughs> 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 So definitely just keep in touch on social media. I'd say that probably is always the best way. But I also um, have an apothecary that you can purchase herbs from. I tattoo whatever city I'm in. I'm usually tattooing in as well. So you can catch me in a few different ways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. We're going to put the links to all those ways to get Anaka in the chat right now. So please follow, like, subscribe, listen to the music and let it wash over you. Um, and with that being said, I want to thank you for being here today and for offering your time for an interview because it literally means the most as the person who gets to like be involved with bringing artists on, but doesn't get a chance to speak to them as indefinitely as this. So like, thank you for sharing your time. It really means a lot. Oh my gosh, thank you for this opportunity. I'm so grateful and excited. And I really hope that folks feel all the intention that we put into it. So just thanks. Yes, yes, Ajay. And for those of you at home, thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions or things like that, please feel free to reach out to me at TTO. And also, um, Ajay, have a good rest of your day. I hope for each and every one of you, you all get out a chance to be out in nature and be with the trees at some point in time um, in your own area. Have a good rest of your yes, day, y'all. Please send out some prayers to the land out here. So so it all works out the way it's supposed to. Yes. <laughs> Bye, y'all. <laughs> I want to thank you all so much for tuning into our very last episode of Radical Futures. You know, I think we went out on a good one, y'all. <laughs> this small series of events is a part of an annual series of artist offerings and workshops titled Radical Futures, which lives in our Queer Republic programming. Throughout this year's Radical Futures, we were dedicated our energy towards a celebration of artistic practice, healing, and ritual reflected in QTPAC femme-led art. Through intentional collaborations with three QTPAC femme-led artists, we investigated themes of wholeness, unreality, space and segregation, healing, lineage and time travel, and belonging to write a love letter to this craft and to ourselves.
Radical Future's goals are to honor Black feminism, its legacy and crucial role in queer liberation, to acknowledge that Black women and femmes are inherently valuable and that our artistic joy and practice is inherent activism to practice collective care as an essential ingredient in solidarity uh, as well towards collective liberation, and to amplify Black women, femmes, and gender expansive individuals. If you are interested in supporting our organization or any of the future Queer Republic programming, please visit us at thetheateroffensive.org. The link is in the chat right now. Also, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us here for this lab episode of Radical Futures. And for those of you who've been following us at the very, very beginning of the series, we want to thank you doubly. <laughs> I am Tanaja Jones again, and thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to sign off now. I hope y'all have a wonderful day. Bye.